Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I would like to perform a few tests demonstrating that Kirchhoff's law was never valid. Cavities do not always contain the radiation which corresponds to the temperature of their walls. In order to do our tests, I ordered a small infrared camera for my Android phone, which is available from Seek Thermal in Santa Barbara, California. I also obtained various metal bars. Complete details of the materials and methods can be found below. So if you want to repeat these demonstrations, you are welcome to do so and prove for yourself that Kirchhoff's law never had any place in physics. In order to test Kirchhoff's law, we first need to construct some black bodies. The easiest way to do this is with cylindrical cavities obtained by drilling a small hole into blocks of material. This method is described by DeVos in his classic paper on the quality of black bodies. However, note that DeVos' paper is actually not testing black bodies at all. What his paper is testing is the ability of materials with varying specular or diffuse reflectivities to eject diffuse radiation when the cavity is being irradiated by an external source. It was not necessary for these cavities to produce radiation, only to use reflection to make it diffuse. The major conclusion from DeVos is that the length of the cavity must be about six times greater than the diameter of the hole such that the ejected radiation will be relatively diffuse at greater than the 80% level. We thus begin the experiment by drilling a 3 16th inch hole to a depth of 1 inch in the graphite, aluminum, brass, copper and steel blocks as shown in figure 1a. These materials all have vastly differing emissivities. Graphite, for instance, should have an emissivity of about 0.7 to 0.9 in the infrared depending on its source. This varies with mines where it was obtained. The aluminum, brass and copper holes should be very good reflectors with an emissivity of less than 0.1 and perhaps even as low as 0.03. Stainless steel can have a rather elevated emissivity on the order of 0.7 and if it is oxidized in a furnace can reach emissivities in excess of 0.95. Of course, I did not subject this material to a furnace, so an emissivity around 0.7 might not be too far off. I cannot be positive of the origin of this steel or its type, so I will just do the test and see what happens. If it behaves like graphite, obviously its emissivity will be high. In any case, I provide a link below to emissivity values generated by the Lawrence Berkeley Laboratories if you are interested. You will note two small scratches in the graphite block. This will be important later. We position the camera on a pile of books on top of an enameled iron broiling pan as displayed in figure 1b and 1c. The lens of the camera is thus about 20 centimeters from the top of the table or 15 centimeters from the top of the block. I added rulers in order to take the pictures, but they were not present when the experiment was done. Now to the results. The first thermal image is shown in figure 2 and was obtained in black mode. You see that all the holes appear exactly the same at room temperature. Wow! Isn't that neat? Kirchhoff's law must be right. All the holes are filled with the same radiation. But not so fast. All these cavities are at room temperature and they are sitting in a room which is also filled with thermal radiation at that temperature. The question is, did the cavities produce the radiation or are they simply manifesting what is already present in the room? For the next part of the experiment, we switch the camera to white mode. Now the holes all appear black. Next, we challenge the holes by bringing a heated galvanized steel rod above them. The rod had been heated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. That corresponds to 232 degrees Celsius or 505 Kelvin. The first image is displayed in figure 3a. It is just the block without the rod nearby. Then in the next group of images, the iron rod is brought close to the block. In figure 3b, it is on the right above the steel hole. With the rod in this position, you will immediately notice that it cannot fill the graphite or steel hole with radiation, but that these two holes remain pretty much as they were with just a tiny speck of reflection at the graphite hole. This indicates that radiation from the rod is reaching this hole as well as expected. However, observe what is happening with the aluminum, copper and brass holes. 
they are immediately becoming filled with radiation from the rod. Next we move the rod to the left. Notice again that there is no effect on the graphite hole and that there is only a slight reflection observed at the top of the steel hole. However, all the others are filled with radiation from the rod and in particular note the pattern on the brass hole manifesting that it is still not able to fully convert incoming radiation into diffuse ejected radiation. That was the point of DeVos's paper. The hole needs to be deeper to get fully diffuse radiation. Next we place the rod at the center of the block. Notice how the three holes from aluminum, copper and brass are again filled. But the graphite hole remains unaffected and the steel hole almost unaffected. However, you will now see reflections in the graphite scratches on each side of that hole. So clearly radiation from the rod is reaching the graphite hole. Finally, we position the rod just to the left of the steel hole and find that at this position the hole is no longer black. But now we observe that rod radiation is able to partially fill the steel cavity. Nonetheless, you can see that the bottom of the hole is darker. So clearly, the steel has much higher emissivity than the aluminum, copper or brass holes, but is not on par with graphite. What is all this telling us? Well, first, it is clear that Kirchhoff's law is false. Not all cavities contain radiation manifesting the temperature of their walls. You can see that the graphite hole never changed, and that's because it is a good black body and can do work. Its emission is governed by the temperature of the block, not the temperature of the rod. As such, it can immediately convert any radiation incident upon it into radiation corresponding to the temperature of its own walls. That is the key point. Real black bodies can do work, and they do so instantly. Conversely, perfect reflectors cannot do work. They contain the radiation which is present in their surroundings, and this has nothing to do with the temperature of their walls. That is why not all cavities are black, and why Kirchhoff's law is false. Cavities with intermediate emissivities will have varying abilities to do work, and this is what we see with the steel block. Its ability to appear black was dependent on the extent and position of the radiation which challenged it, proving once again that Kirchhoff's law is false. I hope that you enjoyed this video on Kirchhoff's law. If you did, hit that like button. In addition, subscribe if you want to journey with me through space here at Sky Scholar. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.